Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Dice Manor. This is a Dice Tower Essential game, so take that into consideration. Dice Tower Essentials are games that I find. I found this one at, talked to a designer a long time ago at PAX Unplugged, and I work with Arcane Wonders to get these published. So I'm somebody who likes these games um, a lot. This one here is a game in which you're rolling dice, using these dice to bid on different buildings, putting these buildings, or rooms, I'm sorry, putting these rooms into your manor that you're building, going through that manor with these same dice and scoring points. Let me show you. This is the main board in the middle of the table. This section here just keeps track of players' points as they receive them. You're gonna have six different blueprints, they're called, spots to get new rooms to add to your manor. Each person's gonna start with one room in the middle of their manor. They're gonna get some dice. They have the opportunity to get two more dice over the course of the game. Something to keep track of your advertising. And you're gonna start the first of four rounds in this game. Each round begins with a bidding phase. When a player is in a bidding phase, players will take turns and you're going to roll the dice. You're gonna kind of group the dice mixed up a number. So I got two fours, two fives, a one, a two, and a six. Those dice can be used to bid on different areas out here. So for example, I might put the two fives at this five building here because that's what I want to get. Now some other jerk, let's pretend later on, maybe the five, the white player puts three fives there. Well later on, when I come back to my bidding roll, I would re-roll these dice again. I might be trying to look for more fives to add to that spot. I didn't roll any, but I might try to take that back. You also have the opportunity to put dice here in the advertising pool but if someone bids higher than you, let's say the three fives have been placed here, that's going to push my bid down. Although multiple people can be on this bottom spot here. There's a third thing you can do with dice that you roll, and that's put them in your manor. But that's gonna, not going to happen until you add some more rooms to your manor, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Players are just going to keep going around until all dice are placed. At that point, whoever has the most dice in each of these rooms is going to take these rooms and add them to your manor. There's some rules like connecting doors to one another, but you'll be building your manor. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Whoever has the highest bid on advertising is going to move their house two spaces forward, take the points in both of those, so that's six points. And the number of dice that they bid is going to move this dice over that many spaces. If it hits your house here, then you get that die of a future die for another turn. This person only moves their house one taking points, and everybody else is going to get one of these tokens and then move their dice over. So even if you lose, you might get extra dice. These tokens are amazing because you can use them to add or subtract from dice when you roll them. Or to re-roll a die. And you can use as many of these tokens as you want. So hopefully you get a lot of them. Now you are building your manor to give tours. And at the on your turn you can place dice in here. Now the first die you place has to be where you start it. So let's say for example I've rolled two sixes. Well I could place one six here because any die can go there and then the other six could go here because they're in adjacent rooms. Whenever you put dice in your manor if you just put one die you get one of those inspiration tokens that let you add or re-roll. But if I place two dice I get two prestige, two points. Three dice gives me five, four gives me nine. If you manage to place nine at the same time, which I've never seen anyone done, you get 19 points. So putting a lot of the same number in your house can be helpful if you roll that. Then you will reset by drawing a tile from the top of each of these and placing a new tile at each of these spots. And then you start another round. After four rounds, everyone's going to do their grand opening tour. The grand tour is kind of like the tours that you do during the game. The tours during the game are going to give you chips and possible points, depending on how many you place at a time. And at the end of every round, in between rounds, you do get a point for each one that you have in your house. But when you do this, you're going to be rolling all your dice that you have at this point in time and starting in here. Well, I rolled um, a one and a one, so I might place one here and one there which will give me points, just like the, during the game itself. And then I'm going to re-roll. And here I got a couple threes, no sixes, I can't go there. I have one two, so I guess I have to put that two there, which just gives me a token. But hey, I'll pretend I had another token. I can change this one to a two to get points. And now I roll again, and I have a single three. A three or a four can go there, but I can only put out all the dice of one number. 
and I'm out of tokens. Well, that just gave me another token by putting out only one die. I roll a four. I put it there. I roll these. I can't put them out here at all. I have no more tokens. Ooh, I have a token I could re-roll. I have no tokens, so one of these dice gets set aside as an unhappy person. And then I roll again. Can't place that one. Also unhappy. And that's the end. You're going to get points based on these dice that you get out here. It's going to be three dice, three points for each one in your manner. So each person does this one at a time. This is like a big grand tour that you've done. You're also going to score points for your manner based on the colors of the rooms. You're trying to have color majority. And you get points based on whoever has the most of each one. The largest manner is going to score points. And you also get a point for every two tokens that you didn't use. These points are added to the points you got during the course of the game, and whoever has the most is the winner. If you've ever heard of Las Vegas, this is definitely a riff on that. Las Vegas was a game nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, had a very similar thing where you roll dice and put dice out to win things. This has that same aspect, but adds to it. In fact, I wouldn't say they have the same mechanism, but they're very different games, because in this one, you're fighting over rooms and you're also fighting over that thing in the middle. And that's what I find interesting. Putting stuff in the middle doesn't get you anything, but gives you those tokens, knowing when to use those tokens. But where the game shines is setting up, moving through that, your mansion that you've built. So there's a lot of stuff going on in here. As you win rooms, you're thinking about their colors for end game scoring. Because after your first game, I've, I played this with a lot of people who after their first game, they're like, oh, I should have got more of the same colors Yes, that, that stuff definitely matters, but also you're looking for the same numbers so you can make these big runs through your mansion and score a lot of points at the end. Um, they, the game plays pretty quickly. It is not a long game at all. Uh, the box here says 30 to 45 minutes. It's probably closer to 45 usually if you're playing with 40, four players, but if you're playing with less than that, and I have played with less than that, it could be a pretty quick back and forth thing. It's a smaller game. You'll see the thin box here. Um, but it's an easy one to just play. You just roll dice and decide what you're going to do. You can manipulate those dice. There is going to be luck of the dice involved in the game. Um, building the mansion is fun. Seeing that layout of your mansion out there, that's one of the parts I enjoy is kind of building that out and then putting the dice throughout the mansion. And you can actually pick different strategies. You can try to really push that middle track as you're moving your house up, scoring a lot of points there, getting those extra dice quicker than everyone else. But you often will do that at the expense of putting more rooms, winning rooms. There's six rooms available each time. Do I want to win these rooms and put them in my building? That can be pretty important, too. Um, I'm not going to pretend that this is some major strategy style game. This is a lighter game that's easy to teach to people and play. Um, not quite what we would consider, you know, a welcoming game, a game for people new to the hobby, but pretty close. And it's easy and fun to both build to roll dice, to put them out. And that kind of charmed me when I first saw it, and I'm glad to see it in production now. This is available. Definitely one you want to consider getting. That's Dice Manor. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.